Hello, and welcome to a chapter on cryptography. So today you're gonna to learn everything about how to encrypt and decrypt data. We'll describe the difference between a hash, symmetric and asymmetric um, cryptography. And then we'll talk about the different types of uh, cryptography and how they are used. All right, so cryptography are used in, in addition to uh, firewalls, net, they were used in, in addition to intrusion defenses, uh, detection systems. You could have all of that into one device, by the way, if you wanted to. Uh, cryptography is the process of scrambling the information so it appears unreadable. Transform the information into a secured form. So please write that down. And also write down what Stenography means. Stenography is not really encrypting the data or hiding it. Uh, actually, it's not encrypting the data. You don't see any gibberish when you are being transmitted. You actually see regular text being transmitted, but you are hiding little pieces of data within what you are transmitting. So if somebody looks at it, for example, it may be an audio or video file, um, or it could be an image. But inside those images could be a piece, little pieces of data that being transmitted. For example, if you transmit the Statue of Liberty, the image, all of these little pixels require a tremendous, uh, um, uh, you know, all the picture re requires a tremendous amount of ones and zeros to be transmitted. So if you use one little tiny pixel in here or in here, maybe eight bits or 16 bits, if you are trying to send in voice and just those put those bits in here, the image, you know, will not be altered pretty much when you are transmitting it. But on the other side, you know exactly where, which pixels, the data that's been really um, changed and you can pick those data. The advantages of stenography, which hiding the data in a transmitted data is you don't have to encrypt and decrypt. So the process moves much, much quicker that way. Cryptography on the other hand is scrambling the data. So you have to have a key to scramble the data and, uh, and in using the same key, you can actually descramble the data, descrambling it, decrypting it, in other words. So that's called symmetric. If you have the same key, you're using the same key to encrypt and decrypt the data, then we're talking about symmetric encryption. If you are going to use two different keys, one to encrypt and one to decrypt, that's called asymmetric, but we'll talk about that down the road. So encryption is encrypting the data. Decryption means decrypting the data. Clear, clear text data is the ones that you are going to encrypt or decrypt the data. You know, cryptography goes back all the way to Julius Caesar's when he went out and he was sending encrypting method messages to the soldiers in the field on what to do on how to attack their enemies. All right, so the key, it could, uh, it's a mathematical value that is used to scramble the data. And we'll, I'll show you that in a few minutes. The plain text is the actual data that you are trying to send. So what you do is you take the plain text, you encrypt it with the key, you'll get the encrypted data, you transmit it, the guy on the other end, excuse me for a second, the guy on the other end will receive the encrypted data, use the same key to decrypt it, and they'll be able to see the clear text again. All right, cryptography and security. I want you to write this down. Cryptography can provide five basic information protections. So I want you to write all of these down, the five points, the five points of protections that cryptography can give us. Confidentiality, being able to protect the confidentiality means you only, only authorized users will be able to see the data, the sender and the receiver. Protect the integrity of the data. You want to make sure that the data that you are transmitting is the data that is received. Protecting the availability of the data. You want to make sure authorized users can access a specific resources whenever they want to. Authenticity of the sender. You want to make sure you know that the sender is the one who sent the data, not someone else. And non-repudiations. You want to make sure that the guy who sent it cannot say, no, I did not do it. You know for a fact with uh, millions and millions to one that it cannot be, it can only be that person sending it. And we'll describe this as we move down the road in this lecture.
and I'll explain to you how you can actually have these five basic information protection using cryptography. All right, there are three categories of cryptography, crypto, cryptography um, algorithms. There's the hash algorithms, the symmetric and asymmetric. The hash algorithm, which is I want you to write down, is the process of creating a unique digital fin fingerprint for a set of data. What that means is it really does not encrypt the data. What a hash pro program or hash algorithm does is it take a, it, it's going to take a look at a plain text of data and how it's set up. It's going to look at um, the fonts, capital letters, let's say, let's say it's only text, lowercase letters where everything is located, everything. If it's italic, small letter, and it will come up with a cipher text, a number. That number is fixed in length. Let's say it's 12 bits. No matter how big the data is or how small, even if it's just one word, it will just come up with a 12-bit number, a, a fixed length cipher text. Now, by looking at that text, you by looking at that cipher text, you can never be able to find out what the data is. It's just like a code for what the data is. Is that clear? So uh, this is, is similar to for it's only one way. So if you put the data through the hash, you come up with that number. By looking at the number, you cannot get the data back. This is like uh, grinding your coffee beans. Once the coffee beans are grinded, you can't get the beans back, right? So you could use this in ATMs, for example. So when you type in your, when the bank calls you up and he says you have your AT, you know, we have your ATM numbers, you go in and you put in a code. What they do, let's say you put in one, two, three, four. They took, they take one, two, three, four, and they run a hash to it, and that hash number is placed on your card, on your ATM card. So when you go to the ATM machine, you put your ATM machine, they have the hash number in there, they'll read the hash that you have on your card, and they'll say, okay, put in the number. If you put one, two, three, four, they'll run the hash on it, and they'll compare it to the number that you have on the card. If it's the same, then you have access to your money. If it's not the same, too bad. If you if you found the card and you try to guess the number and when they run the hash on it, it's not going to be the same, obviously, right? So that's what's important about hash. And remember, uh, it's a two-layer of security with ATMs. You got to have the card, something physically, and you got to remember a pen. So if somebody got your pen, they got to have the card. If somebody has your card, they got to know the pin. Unless they have both, they won't be able to have access. Um, so that's that with the hash. Also, the hash can be used in mostly in um, passwords. So when you type your password on your computer, a lot of time we'll say, do you want us to save this password so you don't have to remember it again? So what, they, what they're going to do is they're going to take your password, hash it, and store it on the hard drive or stored it in a cache. So next time you, when you come in, they, you know, when you type in your, um, your password, they'll run the hash on it and compare it with the one on the hard drive. If it's the same, you gain access. If it's not the same, you won't gain access. The problem with that, if you use the simple word hash and somebody got your hard drive, they'll be able to run the whole dictionary and hash them and compare it with the one on the hard drive and ultimately will gain access. That is why it is highly recommended when you're creating your password, it should be long and it should not be a dictionary word. It should be a phrase, something, and with capital letters, lowercase letters, that cannot be easily guessed, right? All right, so remember, the hash algorithm, the characteristics of it, it's fixed in size. Please write those numbers down. Those points, those four points down, fixed in size, which means you the the cipher text that goes out is one size. Let's say 12 bits. It will always 12 bits, regardless of how big the data is. It's unique. That number is unique to the actual data. It's almost impossible for two pieces, two different pieces of data to get the same hash. Original that if say that cannot be created by the predefined hash. In other words, if you get the if you if you find a hash, you can never find out what the data is. You can't go backward. And it's secure. It cannot be reversed to determine the original plain text. Well, that's what I just said. <laughs> All right. 
Um, you can also use hash for authentication purposes. You can add a key. If you take the hash and you encrypt it, that you that's called a hash message authentication code. Uh, that will allow you, it will use a key to process the set between the sender and the receiver. So please write that down. The HMAC, the hash message and authentication code, is the improved security to improve security over the hash is we'll take the hash and we encrypt it with a key so therefore the receiver will need to decrypt the hash that's being sent before they actually look at the hash number itself right and uh, so that's what the digital um uh, digital signature is for example let's Let's talk about digital signature for a second. So let's say I want to send a letter and I want to sign it. The way it works is the following. I will take the letter and uh, I'll write whatever. Let's say I'm going to tell you we are going to have an exam next week. So that's what the letter is. And I want to sign it. You want to make sure it came from me. So what I do is I take the, the statement that we're having a, a test next week and uh, I'll run the hash to it. And the number comes up and then what we do is i'll have a key encrypt the data with the encrypt the hash with the key stamp it on there and when you receive it you have the same key you decrypt the data you get the hash you run the uh, the statement uh the letter you i mean the letter that i sent you the email that we're having a test next week and if the same hash comes up then you are all good to go then you know it can you know it's legit and nobody tampered with the data because if somebody says if somebody captured it on the way and changed it and says we're not having a class next week you'll be able to do that because when you run the hash a different hash no on the receiver end when you run the hash on the statement that says we're not having a class next week a different cipher text will come up different than the one that's been stamped on the data and then you know that uh, the data has been tampered with therefore the integrity of the data uh, was it was compromised you knew that right all right so hash can protect the integrity of the data to know if the data has been tampered with there are several common hash algorithm the message digest is used for password if you have taken the cisco class with me uh, you know when we do the enable secret password that's been hashed using md5 uh, the secured hash algorithm the sha i usually call it the sha there's one and the 252 and 256 that's mostly for when you're setting up vpns when we take the cisco security uh, class and we set up uh, a VPNs will be able to that will be a, one of our choices is to use the the SHA um, uh, hash algorithm to uh, for authentication purposes there is the whirlpool that's usually not uh, it's common uh, the ripment is not as common password hashes are really for the NTLM the new technology land manager from Microsoft uh, uses uh, a message digest to uh, I'm sorry uses a hash to uh, um, to hash your passwords okay so that's that well you md2 and md4 is not used as much md2 has 128 bit keys the bigger key the more complicated it is to really guess for example if you have a key that's only two bits that means you in four tries you can do it right zero zero the key could be zero 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 one one zero or one one so you can if if the key is three bits you need eight tries it could be either zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero and so on oh well to one 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 if it's four bits it's going to be 16 tries to guess it if it's five bits it's 32 as you can see by adding just one additional bit the tries to guess what the key is increases exponentially so here we're talking about those plain text length can create 128 bit hashes that's the cipher text hash 
that's pretty long enough and it's almost impossible you know and those 128 bits will always be 128 bits right same thing for md5 uh it still has flaws md5 I'm, I'm sorry md4 md5 is the most widely used for passwords uh sha is mostly used for um like i said earlier for um for uh, i'm sorry vpns right whirlpool is a recent uh hash it uses a 5 bit 12 512 bit hash numbers the race integrity um uses different combinations it's not used as much but it's it's very safe and uh ntlm is the one that used by microsoft okay moving away from hash symmetric cryptography what that means is symmetric cryptography is when you have when the sender and the receiver are using the same key to encrypt and decrypt the data the advantages of symmetric cryptography that it's it's fast it is a thousand one thousand times faster than asymmetric if it's in um software if it's if it's hard coded in hardware it could be a hundred times faster actually a thousand times faster when it's hardware and a thousand times faster in hardware than in software but anyways so therefore we are always going to use symmetric can be uh, symmetric uh, cryptography but the problem is with symmetric because of speed it's the advantage is the problem is if some because we're using the same key over and over again that creates a vulnerability so we have to change the keys every once in a while and how do i get the key to everyone that's where asymmetric comes in which we'll talk about that in a in a, in a minute there are three types of symmetric uh, cryptographies there is the des the data encryption standard there's the triple data encryption standard and the aes the advanced encryption standard so let's talk about each one of them again you have the same one the same key that you have the plain text you want to send the data you encrypt it and you transmit it on the way to the and you transmit it the guy receives the encrypted data uses the same key to decrypt the data you know what let me show you this i wrote up uh, i'm going to show it to you in 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 an, in an example sorry about that. let me put my glasses on let's say you want to transmit the word the word water so the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to tran um uh, encrypt it or uh, let's say scramble it or give a key let's say for for the war for the letter w capital w i'm going to send you the letter one lowercase a i'm going to send you a question mark lowercase t front slash lowercase e i'm going to send you capital f lowercase r i'm going to send you the lesson fine you know that key once that's done then you're going to take this and convert them into ones and zeros according to um the ascii code i know that let's say one is zero zero one one zero 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 one that's the data so let's encrypt this for some for example let's say i have this key randomly made up uh zero one 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 zero one 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 right so the way to encrypt the data is if the two bits are the same you output a zero if the two bits are different you output a one this is called logical or so the only time the output is going to be a one if you have the top and the bottom as ones so let's encrypt two zeros is a zero zero and one is a one one and one is zero same as zero same as zero different one different one same zero so this is the encrypted data if somebody captures this they don't know that's not the actual data so you transmit this once the guy receives it he has the same key as i am right zero one one zero one 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 right and you again x or again same same bits zero zero you get a zero one one you get a zero different you get a one different you get a one same zero same zero zero one you get your data back see that's the original data so the way to encrypt the data and then what you do is you take this it becomes a one and you know the key that one is really a capital w and so on right 
The problem with this is by knowing this, somebody will be able to figure out with even knowing the key, the WEP, uh, the encryption for the wire, the wired privacy <clears throat> protection encryption. And that is, uh, a, <clears throat> that is an option that you can set your wireless network with uh, uses this method that want the same key, pre-shared key sometimes we call it, but it's vulnerable and it's crackable. So you have to change the keys um, often. And when we set up a VPN, you want to be able to um, change the keys often because uh, somebody will ultimately guess what the keys, you know, two to the eight is 258 bits. I'm sorry, 256 tries. So in 256 tries, they can guess what this eight bit number key is probably even less than that. You know, 256 different combinations. You can easily do it very quickly, on a, especially on a fast computer. But if you increase the bits, it becomes a little bit more harder. All right, going back to the encryption. So that's what really symmetric encryption is. You say use the key to encrypt the data and then decrypt it with the same key. All right, so again, you see what I did with the word water, converting it. So the first thing you're going to do is you are either you're going to go through either a stream cipher or a monoalphabetic substitution fiber, a substitution uh, cipher. That's easy to break. So for example, if you go through just um, a monoalphabetic uh, substitution, so you're changing it. So instead of the letter A, you're going to substitute. You're going to send that as Z. Instead of the letter B, you're going to send that the letter Z. Uh, y, for example. So if you're going to send the plain text, a profit was achieved by our unit, you're going to send, instead of the letter A, you're going to send Z, right? Instead of the letter P, you're going to send the letter L, right? And so on. So you're sending this cipher text. And each one of those is converted into ones and zeros as you encrypt them with the key. That's it, right? Or you can use transpositioning. So what you do is you write down exactly the design you're going to you're going to take you know you're going to write down the statement a profit was achieved in three in three um, um rows and then you transmit row one then row two then row three then row four then row five and so on this is a little bit more complicated so you're going to send aao phr then you send in number three Row number five. So when you receive it, you know the, what the key is before you scrambling back. That's the transposition fiber. And then you do your encryptions like I told you, right? A one-time pad. A one-time pad creates a truly random key just for one time. You use it to get in and get out, and that's it. It's good if it's kept secret and it's really random and not reused, of course, right? Uh, as we will talk about, uh, Kibar Rose uses a one-time pad. Block ciphers, instead of doing it bit by bit, they you know they encrypt the data in blocks, either eight or sixteen, thirty-two or even sixty-four nowadays, uh, to speed things up a little bit. Okay, so with the encryptions, you were eight, with the symmetric encryption, you'll be able to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of the data not authenticity and non-repudiations. That's when the asymmetric encryption comes in. All right, DES, the data encryptions. That's from the early, uh, this really IBM came, uh, came up with it uh, many years ago in the 1970s. It's still in use. The triple DES is what's really, uh, it's still being used a lot. And uh, it hasn't been cracked, but they think it has weaknesses. This is using three keys. You encrypt the data. Well, in this book, they say encrypt the data with one key, the output. You encrypt it again with another key that is related to the key that was to the key that, to the data that came out, and then in, then encrypt again. So it's encrypt, encrypt, encrypt. Um, I've read other books, including the Cisco books. They say you encrypt the key data with one key decrypt it with another key, then encrypt it again before you transmit. So encrypt, decrypt, encrypt. So if you're taking the 
Security Plus certification exam. It is encrypt, 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 and then decrypt, decrypt, decrypt with the same three keys on the other end. That's the triple data encryption standard. Um, the advanced encryption standard, the AES, is the strongest one. This takes trillions of years to crack. The way they scramble the data before you get your actual key is unbelievable. And then their their keys are like 512 or even 1024 bits, which makes it impossible for brute force, which is which means guessing the data. In 2006, AES was ratified ratified by the United States government as the official. Um, cipher uh, symmetric cipher that is going to be used by the in 2006 actually it was in competition with the uh, rc6 if i'm not mistaken rivers uh, cipher yeah this guy rivers has six different um types of encryptions rc4 is what wep is rc6 is really really strong and it was, like I said to you earlier, was in competition for uh, the VPN set up for the United States government. But AES, because of its quickness, it's the most widely deployed now and even for wireless network. Um, you have the international data encryption algorithm, which comes in 64 bit with 100, you know, they work on 64 bits with 128 bit keys and with eight rounds. Uh, Blowfish uses also 64 bit blocks, and you can have the links between 32 and 448. Um, no weaknesses with Blowfish. Uh, the biggest problem with Symmetric is distributing and maintaining a secured single key. So, um, but the big advantage, which is really what's important, is it encrypt and decrypt data extremely fast. Now we're going to come out now. Next is asymmetric cryptography. So please write that down asymmetric and write all of these down for it. It's also known as public key cryptography. It uses two different keys. Um, so what happens right now is if I'm going to use two keys, um, let's say I want to send you data or you guys are going to send me data. You're, you're going to send me your assignment or your exams online. Let's say I gave you an exam online. I want, to, I want you to give it to me. So what I'm going to do, the sender, is I'm going to create two keys. Uh, and the good thing about these two keys is if you encrypt the data with one, you have to decrypt the data with another. It doesn't matter which key you use to encrypt the data. As long as you used it to encrypt, you used one to encrypt, you have to use the other to decrypt it. So what I'm going to do when I create the two keys, I'm going to keep one and I'm going to send you the other to everybody that wants to talk to me or send me data. The key that I send you is going to be called the public key the, because everybody is shared to everyone. And uh, the one that I'm keeping, I'm going to call private because I'm not sharing it with anyone. So when you guys send me your exams or any important data, you're going to encrypt the data with your public key and you're going to send it to me. If anybody captures it that has the same key as you, they won't be able to decipher the data because they have the same key. The only key that's going to be able to decipher the data is me because I'm holding the private key, the other key, and that's the only key that is going to be able to decipher it. So that's very good, right? Extremely secured. Uh, so for example, I can use it also do it the other way. For example, I'm, remember I told you that, um, let's say you want to know that um, there is an exam next week, right? How do you know it came from me and no one, maybe somebody in class is playing around. When I take, when I write the statement, there is a class next week, next week, I'm going to encrypt the data with my private key, right? And I send it to you. If you were able to decrypt it and read the data, then you know the only person that could have sent it is me, not and none of your classmates because they have the same public key as you. And if, if they send it to you, they must have encrypted it with the public key and you won't be able to decrypt it because you have the same public key, right? 
because the only reason you were able to decrypt and read the data, it must have have been decrypted with the private key. And who who's the only person that had it is me, right? So this is uh, this is how you can validate the authenticity of the sender and non-repudiation. I cannot say, oh, I didn't write that, right? Well, because you guys were able to decrypt the data, the only person in the world could have done it is you because that is the only, you know, sibling to the key. This is the only other guy that can, the, the data must have been encrypted by you because you have the private key, right? So it's a great, but the problem is it takes a long time to encrypt and decrypt the data. All right, digital signature. Now we're gonna discuss digital signature uh, in more details with the private key and the public key. So let's say I uh, wrote a, a letter, I wanna sign it. So here's what a digital signature is. I take the letter that I wrote and I, create a hash, I get a 120 bit hash number, right? Before I stamp it on the data, on the letter, I'm going to encrypt it with my private key, right? And stamp it. So if somebody asked you, what is digital signature? I want you to write this down. I know it's not written. Digital signature is the encryption of the hash, with the private key with the sender with the sender private key or right or the public key if you're if it's not the other way around right it's one of the uh, asymmetric keys that's what a digital signature is why is it a signature and it's unique to the sender because once i um, encrypt the the hash with my private key and I send you the letter, if you were able to decrypt the hash and get the 128 bit number, you know it came from me. And then what you do is you can check the letter, you can check the letter by sending it through the hash program and you can check it with the with the ciphertext, the hash. So you can, you know, you can authentic, you can check the authenticity, it came from me. I cannot repudiate it and uh, you can see the key. So that's digital signature, right? And then you can actually check the integrity of the data to make sure that no one tampered with it. And if everything checks out, you know that there's a class next week, right? So that's that, That those are the examples that they give you. So asymmetric, as, asymmetric cryptography can protect the confidentiality, integrity, availability, authenticity, and the non-repudiation, right? Uh, types of asymmetric, the RSA, the Riverist, Shamir, and uh, Altman. Those guys are in MIT, came up with the first, I think it's the first uh, asymmetric. There's the Defi Hellman too. But RSA is mostly used to really set up for uh, SSH secured shell. Um, it's only a one-time connection when you're sending a very small amount of text. Um, Diffie Hellman, the DH, which is, I don't know, it's really used to send keys, symmetric keys to across the internet. Imagine what we can actually send the key from one place to another. Um, without anybody using mathematically. Once you get the keys on the, the symmetric keys on the other end, will it will be, um, then you can use these keys for a certain amount of time in a VPN. Once the time expires, then you have to renew, then Diffie Hellman comes in and passes keys over the internet in a secured manner. Uh, elliptical curve uses also, um, it's a little bit more complicated. It's not used as much, but it, again, time consuming and CPU utilization, lots of memory it requires. There's quantums, there's the untrue crypt, um, the lattice based, where they can actually go all over the place. Very complicated way of using them. Um, I think the Diffie Hellman, I don't know why it's not mentioned there because that's mostly used in setting up VPNs. All right, there's the encryption through software that you can use. There is the file cryptography. I think we talked about that before. 
Uh, you can use the EFS to encrypt files by files on on your system, on your computer. You can use BitLocker to de encrypt the whole hard drive, for example. Uh, please write this down, the pretty good privacy, because I remember it came up on one of the Security Plus examination. The PGB is to encrypt emails. Uh, the GNU Privacy Guard that runs on Windows, Unix, and Linux as well. Um, so we talked about the BGP. The whole disk you can use. The BitLocker, right? Uh, hardware encryption. Software can be subject to attacks. You gotta be you gotta be very careful because that's you know you may get a virus software that can come up and encrypt your whole hard drive. Like I told you earlier, if you see your computer start going crazy and encrypting stuff, unplug it immediately, right? That's how you can disrupt that. Uh, cryptography can be embedded in hardware, it could be a chip on the hardware, and it can be applied to a USB device if you want to, then you have to have that USB drive to actually um, encrypt and decrypt the data. USB device encryptions, you know, hardware-based hot flash drives. Um, you won't be able to get in until, until you type in a password. You guys are familiar with all that wonderful stuff because um, you don't want any viruses to be anywhere. If you lost your USB drive, you don't want anybody to capture all the data. You want it to be encrypted, right? Uh, the TPM is a chip on the computer motherboard that provides crypto cryptographic services, um, they can generate the numbers for you to encrypt the data. With BitLocker, I think you have to have that, if I'm not mistaken. They'll use the number on your, a random number, and you'll be able to encrypt and decrypt the data. So, uh, you know, on your motherboard, you'll have a chip that will generate the number for you, and then BitLocker will use those random numbers to encrypt the data. Okay, and uh, that's that for cryptography. All right. I didn't think it was going to be that fast. All right. So until we meet on the next chapter, keep up with the homework, guys. All right. I'll talk to you then.